Qurbani means to sacrifice an animal for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the three days of the month of Zul Hajjah, which are 10th, 11th, and 12th of Zul Hajjah. It is compulsory upon every male and female. Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu has said that Sayyiduna. Mama, can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah, sure. What is Eid al Adha and what is the celebration? So, the Qurbani and Eid al Adha, which means the festival of sacrifice, and Qurbani through which we go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. by making this sacrifice in this time of the year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed becomes very pleased when we make a sacrifice sincerely for Allah. Just like Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, the friend of Allah, the Khalil, who he calls, he made this sacrifice. Okay. When did he make that sacrifice? It was a time when Allah wanted him to do something sincerely for him. And he was shown in his dream that he is sacrificing his own son, who is the most beloved Ismail alayhi salam to him. Now he wants to physically demonstrate that sacrifice and wants to sacrifice his own son. But Allah does not want to see the blood shed of a human being at all. He just wanted to test the love and patience of his friend Ibrahim for him. Okay. So what happens next? He goes on to make that sacrifice. Allah replaces that son Ismail with a ram from Jannah, from paradise. Allah accepts that sacrifice and qurbani. And he makes it a way, a method of being close to him, which the word qurbani means, through that we go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Until the day of judgment, every believer who has the means will make that sacrifice as a gratefulness to show this gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do we get? There is a lot of rewards. There is a lot of ajar, what Allah gives us. The main thing is looking after the poor. When we actually distribute the meat after sacrificing the animal, it is normally made into three parts. One we keep for us and our families and our neighbors, and second part is for relatives and a wider circle of uh, uh, cousins who will be visiting us probably on Eid day. But a third portion is a must, which we actually feed the poor, give it to the poor, feed okay. them, because there are lots of poor people in the world that they don't get to eat meat all year round and they wait for Eid al-Adha, especially in the subcontinent, in the poor countries, in the third world. So this is actually what it's all about. The Qurbani, Eid al-Adha is that time when we make that sacrifice for Allah and Allah looks at the sincerity in our hearts. Are we really doing it for Allah? Are we doing it for the poor? How much sincere are we? Mama, yes. what animals can we sacrifice? Can we sacrifice all animals? We cannot sacrifice all the animals. There are certain types of animals which we were recommended and advised to sacrifice in Qurbani. Okay. Actually, what we'll do, because it's Eid day, we'll actually go to the farm and I'll show you exactly which types of animals you can and you cannot sacrifice. How about that? Okay. Let's go. The lift is taking ages. We might as well go down the stairs. We've ate a lot in Eid day. Yeah. It's going to digest the food will. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd, Allahu Akbar.
So basically, uh, we will be looking at the animals and the animals of Qurbani, which are allowed to sacrifice, those which are not allowed, okay. and those which are okay for human consumption. The Muslims eat it. Sometimes there is a lot of wild animals as well. Those which are flesh eaters, and they eat flesh. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Walillahi alham. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Walillahi alham. Mama, I. Are you allowed to do qurbani on chickens? Basically, chickens are very small to do qurbani with because the whole purpose behind it is to actually feed a lot of people, the poor people, the destitute. So the minimum, the smallest animal recommended is actually a goat, a okay. small goat. We can probably see some goats very soon around here. There's plenty, but chickens are not actually recommended. Okay. These are the goats I was telling you about. You sacrifice them and there's lots of uh, actual uh, minimum. You could give it to maximum people. The meat is uh, huge when yeah. you actually, and it's very tasty, it's very famous, the goats. You know, uh, it's very popular, the lambs, the small ones which are called lambs and the goats. And uh, you know, these sizes are very big sizes. I mean, yeah. they almost look like a little calf. I mean, very big ones indeed and uh, so we can actually Allah talks about them in the Quran the ghanam you know and the goats and uh, they are very humble and the Prophet salam, were ordered to actually graze a lot of goats because they actually create patience in you when you actually control them you run around them you look after them you graze them and they actually create this humble and humility in you that is why actually what it is uh, we're actually recommended okay. and that eating or that animal actually will create some kind of humbleness within inside us as well okay. you want to touch it no <laughs> I'll touch it try and hold it <laughs> Try and touch the ears, very soft. The ears are very soft. Try and try and try. Try and touch the body. I'm not going to touch nothing. <laughs> You're scared. Try and touch the belly. Big fat belly. Come on. Look. <laughs> Mama, on, on these, on these sheep? And... Yes, these are sheep and uh, lambs and llamas. We could see all three in one place. Wow. And these are also recommended for, but you can only give one name in sheep and goats. <laughs> Lama. Oh my God. Because I'm not too naive. I I I I I I follow the count naive. I'm not too morsi.
Mama, can we do kurbani on these animals? You know, we actually strongly recommend the hadith of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we actually slaughter, sacrifice camels and cows. The reason is there's lots of meat and seven people can share it out, the cost of one cow, one camel. And lots of distribution you could eat as well as distribute, which is the whole purpose of it anyway. And seven people can there give their names recommended as well in the hadith that because one person to actually give the whole cost of one cow or one camel may be very expensive but when seven people get together and they sacrifice one cow or one camel which is larger in size seven people have done just their qurbani done are also it's a bigger share a lot of people get to eat a lot of meat indeed Mama, are you allowed to do kurbani on pigs? Basically, we are not allowed. It is najisul ayn, which means that it is not an animal which we eat. This is not an animal we actually allow in Islam as it is scientifically proven that this animal has a lot of qualities which are advantages, disadvantages, and this makes us very much aware that it is not permitted halal for us to eat. The reason whole behind is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that I have made prohibited and unlawful some of the foods to consume. One of them is maitatan, which is the dead meat or the dead animal, flowing blood and the pork, which is the pig meat. So in no circumstances, Muslims, just like in the other scriptures, in the heavenly scriptures before, even at the time of Isa alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam, the prophets, the, the Bible and the Torah, which is the last testament, the new testament, and the scriptures before the divines, they made it clear that pork was not allowed okay. because of certain qualities or certain habits it has. And you can find lots of details if you look up on the actual scientific reasons and the effects and the aftermath and the impact it has on a person who eats and consumes pork regularly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed orders us in the Quran, eat what is lawful and what is pure from the earth. Now, what is pure? What is lawful? What kind of animals are humble? What kind of animals don't attack other animals? Those who are not wild, those who are not actually, like you would say, tiger, cheetah, lion, puma, or crocodiles, you name it. All the wild animals of the forest are not allowed to eat. Okay. And all the humble animals, the animals which we keep in our farms, sheep, goat, cows, and what we've seen today, they are all humble. They would not harm anyone, but they would benefit others. For example, let's say the cow. It gives out milk. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides breakfast to one-fifth of the population, or is it the entire population, maybe the most of the human race, they have breakfast and they have milk, they have cereal, they have tea, they have coffee, they have hot chocolate, whatever. But we use milk and there's barakah and blessing in that milk. Allah says that I actually feed you, you drink from what is between fars wadam, which means the waste, the stool of that cow and between the blood from which Lebanon Khalis and the pure milk is coming out for you, which fulfills that the quench, 
yeah. and it comforts us, those who drink it. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a lot of barakah and a lot of blessings in that milk for us. It fills us up. It's got lots of shifa, lots of kiyo. It has lots of um, benefits in it. Whatever you name it, it's in it. Likewise. Mama, what's that? Oh, that's a very unique kind of animal. I actually haven't seen one of these. Oh, they are Shetland ponies. The Shetland ponies. Shetland ponies, fun facts. Shetlands are the smallest horse breed, so it's a kind of okay. small horse. Okay. They are very in intelligent, so can be friendly or irritable as well. They, they are very clever. They're little ponies. They're super strong and pull twice their body weight. The long mane helps protect their eyes, head and neck, and very cold weather. They come from Shetland Island. You know the Shetland Island? They come from there. You should not uh, feed them bread or biscuits or any of the animals as it's bad for them because uh, it's not good for them. Yeah? Because the heat ah, is like this. Yes. Parsa, we call it parsa. Parsa. Huh? And it only eats from the grass. So it's for a... us it's kosher. Ah, okay, kosher. Then we have to shecht it in a special way. Same, same way. Yeah. Same way in the Islamic rituals. We're cousins, really. You know? Yes, of course. I was telling him about the Abraham Abrahamic faith. It is coming, the Jewish, the this Christianity, one, Ibrahim. Islam, Ibrahim. Well, well done. So this is coming from the actual Ibrahimic faith. You know, this is Jewish brother here. Assalamu alaikum. And shalom as well. Shalom. shalom. And this is our brother. Today we have met him. And in the kosher, in the Qurbani, same rule that it is allowed to eat that animal for the sacrifice so it is fine uh, because it's the hooves now one thing it's unusual pig we don't like to even say this word but no. a pig has got feet like this also yes but it doesn't only eat this it no. eats everything it's it so everything is not kosher. absolutely but they say when when the world changes and the mashiach comes yeah. The pig will change himself also. Absolutely. And we'll be able to eat it too. Same like when the Joseph, uh, when the Jesus comes yeah, in the yeah. world, you, and yeah, this yeah, will yeah, be a so different, so friendly so world. Different place. <laughs> different place place. altogether. But now we can still be friends. Of course. Even before then. Of course, of course, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and uh, Shalom, nice to meet you. Enjoy What's your name? David. Da David. David in uh, the Torah name of Dawood, the prophet. prophet. Dawood yeah. alayhi salam. And I'm Elias. Elijah, you know Elias. Elias is a name, and Ibrahim is your son. My son, your son Ibrahim. And so he's called Israel. Israel. And this one, the little one, is Nahman. Nah, Nahman. And he's Anis Rahman. Anis Atmilaw. He should all have Rahman for all of us. <laughs> Rahman. <laughs> so nice to meet a Jewish brother here today. As we have the Abrahamic street, the roots and the original, we come from the same and we follow Ibrahim. And on the day of judgment, we will be under the roof of Ibrahim. Just how we pray together in Aqsa, in the holy sites, uh, together in Baitul Maqaddas in Jerusalem as well. Mashallah, nice to see everyone today in a very What's friendly name? atmosphere. Name? My name is Elias, Elijah, Elijah, Elias, Elias. Two great prophets. Two great prophets. Great prophets. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Very, very nice to enjoy see you. Eid. Indeed, definitely we will enjoy it okay. and hope to see you. Have a lovely day with your family. Thank you. Okay, shalom. 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 The most important thing after looking at these animals is to realize that these animals sheep, cows, goats, llamas are allowed to be slaughtered and sacrificed for the sake of Allah in the Qurban, in Eid al-Adha. And the most important thing as well, that what was the whole issue? What is that Qurbanian purpose of it? Prophet ﷺ did reply to that question when he was asked that Husunnatu Abikum Ibrahim, that this is the methodology, the way of your father Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Okay. And what do we get in reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is amazing. For every drop of blood, for every hair on the animals or the wool on their backs or the hooves and calves, these will be a source of our reward on the Day of Judgment. They will be scaled and weighed on the 
right hand side on the scale of our good deeds as well as rewards plenty of rewards we'll get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does get pleased end of the day it's all about taqwa and that sincerity that self-consciousness that piety how we go close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran that the flesh or the blood of that animal does not reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but what reaches Allah is it's the actual taqwa the piety which lies deep inside our hearts this is what reaches him yeah and that's why we wanted to talk about Qurbani, come here, show it practically, so people actually get to know who are watching from home that, yeah, this is practical, this is Qurbani, this is a farm, this is exhibit. Because in this country, we don't see this slaughter. It's done in, behind closed doors due to health and safety reasons inside the slaughterhouses. But in our countries, we could actually see them back home, you know, you know being slaughtered everywhere. And they are, it's quite practical, but in, here we don't know. That's why we came to the farm. And when we come to the farm, that's we can actually see the animals. We don't slaughter. We can't, but we can actually see them exactly how the, uh, these are being slaughtered in the countries, even in Mina, in Hajj, in, in the thousands and hundreds of thousands, being slaughtered, served, distributed, eaten, given to poor countries alike throughout the world. Every poor country in this world, they receive. They get, they receive these actual animals slaughtered, parcel delivered from Saudi Arabia. Mama, I've learned a lot of things today. Looking at all these animals, and we went to the farm. I've learned what what animals you can do kurbani on, which animals you can't. Like for example, llamas, cows, sheep goat, all these animals, they are like big enough to do kurbani on. Something like a chicken, you can do kurbani on it, but it's not really recommended as it's like really small and you're supposed to feed a lot of people. So, cows, goats, all these animals are uh, recommended to do kurbani on. But, but something like pigs um, is not really recommended to do kurbani on because Allah states in the Quran that it's not really allowed um, to do kurbani on pigs. And they're, not, and they're not halal, so. So, we had a lovely day in the farm, visited lots of things. Now, let's enjoy the rest of the day of the Eid and have other celebrations and go home. Okay.